Good evening, everyone. I welcome to the world's biggest digital space conference this year, organized by STNX and Helium Learning Labs. My name is Sakshi, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Space Development Nexus and your host for today. This year's theme, the role of space education and research in emerging nations, was adopted to put a spotlight on the space activities in emerging nations and empower them further. We expect that through this summit, the students and young space professionals can get guidance with their education and career. SNX Foundation was established in the year 2013 with the purpose of making space accessible to everyone through its initiatives and educational projects supported by space research and development. Helium Learning Labs, who are our organizing partner, are an edtech company that aims to establish a world-class digital space school to fill the gap between space education and the space industry to train students for the future space workforce. Now, introducing our speaker for today, Professor Angel Arsha Hill is from Panama and the proud father of Alaya. Alaya, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he is a regional coordinator of the Space Generation Advisory Council, uh, SGAC for North America, Central America, and the Caribbean region, NCAC, where he has mentored students in regional space competitions and established initiatives as the open course of introduction to space engineering for students in Central America with the support of the national point of contact in Nicaragua, El Salvador, Costa Rica, and Panama. Angel holds a master's degree in electrical and computer engineering from the Georgia Institute of Technology, USA, and he's currently doing research for the University of Vigo in Spain and the University of Nottingham, UK, about the capabilities of small satellites for lunar communication and navigation. Angel has experience in several small satellite projects developing the telemetry, tracking, and command subsystem. Angel is currently a professor at the University of Santa Maria, uh, La Andua, uh, USMA in Panama, where he teaches engineering courses of telecommunications and space with publications about applied technology in agriculture, renewable energy, and education, and with three technological patents. Angel has been passionate about space and satellites since he was a kid, and his goal is to promote space development in his home country, Panama, and the Latin America region, so the younger generation can have opportunities to grow in this sector. Thank you, Mr. Angel, for joining us today. Um, we are so glad to have you here. Please go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience and um, start with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Saki, and thank you so much to all of the organizing team who has been, I guess, put a lot of effort in this event. And I guess I am one of the last speakers, more than 30, right? And so I think you have a target, a great audience in terms of emerging countries. Well, we usually don't have many voices or opportunities to present our progress in space. So again, thank you um, to all of your uh, members and SDN, Helium, Helium, and all of the um, partners that are organizing this Global Summit space event. Right, the topic that I would like to talk about today, is specifically about space education and research in my country in Panama, but also in other countries in our region, in Central America, and in general, in Latin America. So it's a um, great opportunity to show what are we doing here, and maybe it's similar to what other regions around the world, especially in emerging countries, are, are doing. Uh, to give you a little bit 
a little bit of background about myself. So first of all, I, I love studying and learning. Um, I've been very fortunate to study undergrad, masters, and now at, at PhD level with scholarships. I know many people those don't have, don't have this opportunity. So um, I think I'm very fortunate and have took advantage of this, uh, like studying my undergrad in Panama, here in Panama, a master's degree in United States. And now at PhD level doing some work with universities in Spain and, and, U and UK. I also love research. Yeah. Not only about space. But also about other technologies that can produce a benefit for um, the society. For example, uh, let me show you here. So what you can see here is a prototype of a rotatory photovoltaic system to increase the energy production in, in houses. And also here you can see a drone um, flying over some corn fields to monitor humidity or um, health of the crops. So always aiming to de develop technology for the benefit of society. And in the left, which is my passion space, so I've been researching and working in several small satellite projects, both in, in the US and now in the UK. Um, most importantly, working with the telecommunication portion, like antenna design or the analysis of the link, communication link between the satellite and the ground station. But as uh, overall, yeah, always trying to find solutions for, for the benefit of society. Uh, I also hold some patents, patents, technological patents at the U US office. And yeah, looking forward to produce new ideas and, and technologies for, for my country. I also love teaching. Um, my, my mother, she's, um, She's a teacher, um, primary teacher, primary school. And all of my family, they have been uh, doing these uh, activities. I teach in, teaching uh, primary and secondary school. So it's like in my blood um, to not only gain knowledge, but also to provide knowledge to um, students. So I teach not only about space, but also about other complex topics such as communication systems, antenna design, uh, digital signal processing, and others here in Panama. And as you will see later, also giving some guest lectures to other countries. And finally, I love space. So I've been in love with space since I was a kid, four or five years old. Initially, when I wa used to watch movies about space, um, obviously I couldn't see the moon landing, for example. That was the sort of so source of inspiration for other people. But in my case, it was more like, like about Hollywood movies. And I was very curious, and it was amazing for me, like how humans can develop a device, a satellite, and put that satellite into space and keep them orbiting the, the Earth and taking pictures of the Earth or taking other type of measurements and sending this back to the Earth at the speed of light. So that was um, amazing to see from my side and inspired me to follow career path in telecommunications and satellite technology. Uh, my passion for space have uh, given me the opportunity to know other um, academic institutions and people involved in space activities, such as um, QTech, uh, Kyushu Techno Institute of Technology in Japan, the research institution in Brazil, and also participating in several congresses, uh, not only in Panama, but also in Costa Rica, uh, Spain, uh, Mexico, and others. 
And one of the things that I have uh, feel that I feel more proud of is uh, developing courses for undergrad and also for younger kids about space, like introduction to what the concepts of, of space are in terms of engineering. And I will show you later uh, how this is impacting and benefiting um, a lot of students in Central America. Another dimension, Central America, and uh, just to give you a bit of a background in terms of development in, in this region, uh, mainly led by Costa Rica since 2010, um, trying to consolidate initiative from the region with the um, ACAE, the Central American Association for Aeronautical and Space, and also with some experience launching a small satellites, Costa Rica, Guatemala, and in the future, other countries such as Honduras, um, probably Panama as well. So it has been this step-by-step -step development of space initiative in our countries. And more people, more students are now getting uh, prepared or get studying some topics about space technologies that will get us uh, ready for the future uh, space development in these countries. Also, in case you don't know, uh, I would like to give you a glance about what Panama is. So we are located in Central America. Um, we are a cosmopolitan country, um, but mostly we are known because of the Panama Canal and the implications of Panama Canal to the logistic and um, sea commerce or maritime commerce, and also the impact that um, the Panama Canal has for our country in terms of logistic and development of the economy. But also we are um, a mix of cultures and ethnicities. So here in Panama, you can find um, people from different uh, ethnicities and uh, beliefs and cultures. So we are very friendly, I guess, as much as um, the Latin American countries or in Central America. And we are trying, of course, to progress uh, every day. We are just around 4.5 million um, habitants now. Um, this is a small country, but yes, I think we have a lot of uh, things to offer to other um, countries globally. Uh, unfortunately, the educational sector has been negative impact by COVID and also as you see in the graph, the level of investment that we have been given to education hasn't been enough. So the blue line it represents the investment, the national budget of Panama and the black line is the total allocated to education. So as you can see, we are below the red line, which is the recommendation by um, UNESCO. And that's something we have to improve, to be honest, not only in education, but also in research. I think we invest too little compared with the national budget. Uh, in education is less than 20% and in research is even less. So there's still some things to do for uh, investment on trying to put more money and effort in um, increasing the level of education and research, not only in our countries, but in, in the entire Latin America region. And the map that you see in the right is from 2020, but it's still, it's happening today, in which Panama, you see here this uh, small country, um, almost all of the schools were closed in 2020 and very few have been reopening this year because of the pandemic. So the impact of the COVID pandemic in education has increased uh, over, over the months. And countries such as Panama and in our region has, were not prepared, I should say, in terms of infrastructure, access to internet, um, the preparation of 
teachers and professors in terms of technologies. So it has been very difficult to um, progress in education, especially in these challenging times with COVID. So if the general education has been very impacted and it has been very difficult, just can't imagine how difficult it is to promote space education and research um, during this pandemic. But nevertheless, I think we have made a, a lot of progress since maybe five, six years ago when um, there was a technical committee to evaluate some initial ideas about the future and the space development in Panama and how could, how could we as a country support the development in space of uh, the region, Central America, by um, launching some initiatives from universities and institutions to send students to um, get prepared in terms of space engineering uh, degrees, and also by participating in congresses and, as mentioned, creating access to space knowledge by uh, introduction to space engineering courses. And we have participated in what, what I call a collaborative education since we are very small countries in our region. It's very difficult to provide students with all of the knowledge because maybe I might be um, more expert in the communication portion. So we have to request help from our um, other countries such as Costa Rica, the Tecnológico de Costa Rica, uh, they also have uh, courses in, in space and have been supporting our courses, courses here in Panama and vice versa. So I have participated as a guest lecturer in other courses in Costa Rica. Um, Guatemala has also supported us, Mexico, and support from other uh, regions like in Europe or, or UK to do this collaborative education. We also have advanced by uh, or learning by competing or participating in competitions such as NASA space apps in which the student, most of them, this is the first experience they have like consolidating or using uh, software, creating code to uh, attack some of the challenges that this NASA space apps challenge uh, provide. So it's a good opportunity for students at university levels and also high school to merge their knowledge in software or computer and also always thinking to solve problems yeah, for the benefit of society. Another competition that we here in Panama uh, participated is um, organized by the Insti Insti National Institute of uh, space research by the, in Brazil called Cube Design, in which we have uh, represented Panama and uh, designed uh, CubeSats and all of the subsystems by software, given the fact that we are in, pandem in pandemic. So that's a good opportunity as well, having the chance to work with other countries remotely and taking advantage of the of the um, all of the remote technology that we are uh, having nowadays. This same group called Panasad One, they are also creating or designing ideas uh, on how to use CubeSat technology or nanosatellite technologies for the benefit of our country either uh, studying the salinity of lakes or water level monitoring, ship tracking, that could be of benefit for the uh, Panama Canal, or other type of research that we can um, perform with the support of other countries. Also trying to apply to initiatives such as the uh, UNOSA, Space for All, uh, to put uh, the CubeSats in, in the International Space Station and launch them from them. So that's the type of opportunities that are well fitted for our country because are directed to emerging countries. 
And I think there's a good chance for us to prepare projects uh, well organized and become a key player in the space industry, at least in our region. And in the terms of research, at least in my university, since we have experience doing research project in other type of technologies, such as solar and drones, the next step we are looking for is to establish a research group with students interested on satellite technology and communication specifically um, to make advantage, take advantage of what we know in, in, in Panama, which is more about telecommunications. I would like to now mention the, the initiative that I initially had at the university level, which, the, which was the first introduction to space engineering course, the first one in Central America, um, just before, after um, the one in Costa Rica. And the idea of bringing this course from Panama to other countries and do it for free, I think that was a great idea and that has impacted more than 100 students now. So we added the third edition. Um, soon we will have a fourth edition. And what we are providing here is access to concepts and theory and practical uh, examples of space related concepts to countries such as Nicaragua, Panama, Salvador, and Costa Rica with an amazing staff. Um, I, I cannot. Uh, get tired of this enough. Um, the level of collabor collaboration that we have had between countries has been amazing. And the level of work that my colleagues have been uh, providing to the course also has been amazing. And I need to mention them uh, because I'm really, really grateful of what have done, they have done with this course. Uh, Roxy Williams from Nicaragua, our general coordinator, amazing job. And uh, our other colleagues from El Salvador, Fatima and Alfredo, and Sebastian from Costa Rica. Uh, I think we have made a good, gro good group to teach students about space concepts. Just to give you an idea what the type of things we teach them, uh, we have 10 models and uh, each of the models also have some tasks assigned so the students can understand better the concept individually and also in group. And we start with explaining the motivation of exploration to space. So from the beginning of the times uh, up to day. So how these eras have been developing from exploration to the space race, to um, collaboration in space and now the space uh, 4.0 or the new space where we have seen several um, development. Uh, also, nine days ago, you know, in Galactus, um, Richard Branson went to, to space in an orbital fly and today, um, best with Blue Origin, um, they will also go to space in, in another suborbital flight. So we have seen this uh, evolution of space and now it's the turns of our generation to create new opportunities and take advantage of what's going on at this moment. Then we uh, do a little bit of explanation about pioneers in astronomy, orbits, orbital mechanics. Then we explain about rockets, how they work, what are they used for, um, precisely, we can see here the, the type of flight that will happen today, the suborbital flight with a uh, new shepherd, and also similar to the Virgin Galactic, uh, another suborbital flight um, yeah, for, from an airplane. And then we have special topics. In this edition, we talk about specifically about the space shuttle mission and the impact of these missions in today's space industry. We have also explained about milestones in the space development um, from the space race between the Soviet Union and the United States, um, the moon conquer by, by the United States, and also a specific model to new applications such as uh, small satellites.
We also provide some training and workshops uh, to using software um, to create mission designs, space mission designs, to attack several problems in our society, such as monitoring of sea level, deforestation, um, forest fire detection, and, and so on, even internet for education. So all of our projects are, and our education is intended to not only create critical thinking in the students, um, because they will, they not only understand about space concepts, but also how these space technologies can benefit uh, the humanity here, here on, on Earth. And also we invite um, several uh, key speakers. We have had NASA, people from SpaceX as well, that has support this um, teaching. So it's a combination of teaching with local um, resources and also bring people from other countries or from other regions that can provide more knowledge to our students. And since my goal is to inspire people, and starting with my own daughter, um, I'm trying to teach her how to think about the future of our space species. And um, yeah, that, I think that's one of my missions here, to inspire uh, young students and professionals to follow their dreams. And if they are interested on space, yeah, go for it and don't let anybody to tell you that you cannot. Thank you, Mr. Angel. Um, that is a very cute picture of you and your daughter. Um, <laughs> Sorry, can you please unmute yourself? I think the... Yeah, uh, so we weren't able to hear the video because you were uh, on mute, yeah. It's okay, it's completely fine. Yeah, thank you so much. That was so wonderful. Um, just the insights of uh, where Panam is and also your relation, um, you know, to, to education as well. Um, it's truly inspiring. And I'm sure that, um, you know, a lot of students in Panama and even your daughter uh, will be looking forward to you for, for her future career, probably. Maybe she will be first career in space or not. But uh, you are doing, you know, a very wonderful job. Um, and just, just you know, thinking, just talking about the education part as well that you're so passionate about. Um, and, uh, you know, you also talked about that, you know, there's not a lot of investment um, in, in education, in, in space education in general. So what kind of uh, reformation do you think is required in space education in emerging nations, not particularly just Panama? And how can we make sure that, you know, space is for everyone? Yeah, as, as you mentioned, the goal, global goal, should be make this access for all a, a true uh, goal. Because um, for now, you can see that there is a, like like another race to go to space, but the people who is going is because they're a billionaire, they have a lot of money. So truly, the space is not for all just yet. So I think one of the key points in education uh, nowadays is not only um, to learn about space, but also to teach students how they can create businesses, uh, how they can create ideas that can generate revenue for them or for their countries. And not only leaving the um, opportunities from big companies, like I think uh, in entrepreneurship, something we are lacking a little bit in space uh, education and it's very important nowadays because every uh, new idea can be can become um, a company and create businesses and opportunities for others who can uh, work 
in this idea. So entrepreneurship, I think, is a key concept that we have to increase in space education. And how do people in Panama actually perceive space? Like, what what is their perception? Or, you uh, know, generally, for example, in India, now we are, you know, getting this push because um, the government is getting slowly getting involved, um, you know, in space, even our um, organized is through that is you know, the, the our governmental organization has opened up its gate, gates for you know private players as well so so could be our situation here has been you know better and changing so but how do people in Panama perceive it um have if you had a chance to interact with them yeah of course um i guess as many of the countries in the region their perception the general perception is that space is not needed at this moment or space technologies or thinking about space and rather we should focus our resources in like trying to mitigate the effects of covid or the poverty which i agree uh, but we as a space educator have a great challenge to uh, teach people to educate people space development has also impacted the way we live on the earth and it will continue improving some of the activities we do here on earth actually one of the strategic goals uh, that as you, we as a human are, are trying to target like the end of poverty access to communication health has, have also been supported by um, space technologies such as satellite communications um, navigation by GPS or uh, any other navigation system. So the response is yes. Even our countries doesn't perceive don't perceive uh, space activities um, as necessary at the moment. I think uh, they still are, and they will continue producing benefits for uh, countries. No, definitely, and I agree with with the point that you know, there are certain issues that government would like to more focus on uh, you know, in emerging nations and of course it is our responsibilities as space educators or someone in the space industry to do our best through you know outreach activities and i think you also discuss about you know a collab educational collaborative activity that happened um in your country for better education so you know are there any more collaborations in the near future that are coming up between you know the emerging nations or any uh, how important do you think you know collaboration between even space faring nations who are mostly uh, fully developed in uh, in the space um area and emerging nation is to to overall development of space ecosystem it is important uh, it's extremely um, important that we that are in, in small countries learn to uh, find some uh, common points to develop the space activities in our countries. Uh, some countries might be expert in some topics, like I mentioned in the case of Panama, I think we are strong in terms of communications, and other countries are stronger in other um, areas of like rocket design or um, computer design. But I think if we um, try to work together at, at some extent, extent in Central America, we can be more attractive to investment from other countries in like in Europe, Asia, United States, rather than working individually. Although I understand that sometimes individually you work faster but obviously in collaboration you work longer and the goals could be achieved in a better way. So I completely agree that not only for education, but in general, collaboration is required in our countries to develop uh, the space program or space development in, in the region. No, definitely. And, you know, as you talked about the new space age as well, right, that we are moving um, even the mission for Virgin Galactic and the mission, Blue, Blue Origins mission as well. And there will be a lot of new space careers that will be coming up uh, pretty soon. And there already have been some space careers that are, um, you know, in right now, like space law policy or, you know, um, other careers that have been emerging. So what kind of space careers, you know, you are most uh, looking forward to or excited about 
um, you know, in the new space age. Yeah, the new space is opening a lot of new trends and opportunities for, for um, areas where you maybe believe in the path that you couldn't uh, bring, uh, bring any ideas to, to the space, like you mentioned, law, policy. Um, we, I have seen more people now um, getting experience and trying to understand more about policy in, their terms, in terms of space, uh, policy makers, standards, and also medicine, space medicine. I've seen a lot of development there. Um, the use of AI, artificial intelligence, and computer has also greatly impacted the uh, space arena. So I think it's an opportunity for many people now that even if you are doing, um, you work in a tourism company, you can even can think that in the future you might be doing tourism for, for space. Or if you work in a logistic company, then you can uh, believe that maybe in the future your logistic concepts can also be applicable to space. So I think it's related to everything at this moment. And as long as we keep the focus that space can also or should also be uh, addressed to, to mitigate some of the problems we are having in, on, on the Earth. And um, just to, you know, just mitigate the problems that are here on Earth, right? Um, are there any projects that you're involved with uh, related to, I think you talked about application in agriculture um, or, you know, something that you, you want to talk about, you know, these projects uh, to probably to mitigate climate change as well, um, that you have the projects you're involved with, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do have experience in using technology in the case of agriculture to monitor via drones the health of crops, especially corn, and also uh, using satellite technology can benefit the precise agriculture. So we have been focusing over the years to put things in space, like our countries in Central America. All of us want like put a satellite in space, but also another opportunity is the downstream, like how do we use the signals that are already in space, especially with the Copernicus program or Galileo program from uh, Europe, that you can use these signals to um, create other services uh, for agriculture in this case, like precise um, agriculture, putting GPS devices in tractors or uh, machinery that can support or increase the, the production uh, in agriculture. Also, in telemedicine, tele teleeducation that nowadays is completely needed, and we will continue like this in the future. So yes, I think space and satellite related technologies are having an impact right now, and especially in our countries, even though we don't perceive it directly, yes, we use space technology in our uh, daily life. And just to get to, you know, one fun question, and then there will be a last question um, from my side, um, is that what, you know, space sci-fi movie inspired you to, you know, be in space? Because everyone, everyone in the space industry has, you know, that, 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 uh, that uh, sort of uh, an inspirational movie or, you know, a moment that inspired you to be in space. Yeah, I think it was like 1999 or something before the, um, the millennium. Um, uh, there was Armageddon and the impact. For me, it was very nice, a very nice uh, movie or sci-fi in which we as a humanity had to come together to try to save the Earth from an external threat. And it was pretty amazing. That inspired me a lot, how to produce technology to protect our planet and our humanity. Great. And what suggestion or career advice you would like to give to you know, students or young professional who wants to pursue a career in space, looking after you know, your journey as well? And you know, how can they follow up? Yes. So 10, 20 years ago, it was extremely rare that students or young professionals from our countries uh, went to work in NASA or other uh, space agencies or private industry in space. But nowadays, is more accessible. So 
I will advise all of you listening to, to this podcast or this webinar to take advantage of this and please focus um, completely in your goals. Uh, nowadays, we have many information going around and we tend to get absorbed by too many things happening and we lose focus of what we are actually looking for in the future. So if you really want to be a space enthusiastic, space engineer, please focus on, on your career uh, from now, even if you are very young, because there's a lot of opportunities and it will be very sad if you let this opportunity pass now that you have it in your hands. So please uh, keep working and studying and do research. And yeah, always think about uh, the benefits of space for us human. Thank you so much, Mr. Um, Angel, for joining us today. It was a wonderful session. And I'm sure a lot of students will be you know, inspired by your journey and you know, in in Panama, and they will follow up. Um, I wish you good luck, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you for the invitation. Bye. Thank you. So we are having our last session.